Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In case you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing since I'm going to release weekly videos and during the Grand Slams even more content. And in this video, today's video, I'm going to walk you through through the three uh, quarterfinal matches that have already happened. The Nadal team is still pending. The winner is not known, but the other three, um, I'm going to walk you through it and then I'm going to preview the Fedra um, Djokovic semi-final. So very interesting matches, mouth-watering semi-final lineup between Djokovic and Fedra. A lot to talk about and a lot to look forward to. So first let's start with uh, the um, match between Fedra and Tennis Sandgren. So the ATP website titled this The Great Escape or Federer's yet another great escape. I tend to agree. He should have lost that match. Uh, Tennis Sangren had seven match points. Admittedly, only one was on his own serve, but still, seven match points. He was so close and he was playing well. So it's sort of a miracle that he survived that match and he managed to get through. So in the first set he was playing relatively solid tennis and he managed to get the breakthrough once, that was enough, served out the match. In the second set, already at the beginning, you sort of felt that he wasn't really 100% or something was off. And then you could see it in, in, in his demeanor and the way he acted. Um, he was a little bit nervous or maybe a lot more nervous than we usually see him or more than he usually lets us to see. He lost the second set 6-2 in the third set he was pretty down, He was his mood was also down, he picked a fight with a uh, uh, line umpire then <clears throat> a little bit of discussions with the chair umpire, he got a warning for uh, audible obscenity. This is not something we usually see from Roger Federer. Nevertheless, he called the trainer, he got treatment, he took some painkillers, and that seemed to help. Even though he lost the third set, in the fourth, he really hung in there. At 4-5 down, serving for the match, he faced three match points, which he all saved. Some were long rallies, and uh, he said at the end that he felt that he got lucky. So I kind of agree with that. Sangren could have gone could have won the match right there, but they made it to a tiebreak. In the tiebreak again, Federer faced three straight match points when he was 3-6 down in the tiebreak against Sangren. Uh 6-3 he was serving, 6-4 he was serving. He won his both his service games at at 6-5 for Sangren. Sangren's serving for the match. That was probably his biggest opportunity. He didn't manage to win it. So in the end, uh, Federer edged out tie break, 10 points to 8. And in the third, he made one break. He was serving first and closed out the match 6-3. So <clears throat> this is going to be part of the preview, which is coming up between Djokovic and Federer, because this is a very important part of, of Federer's tournament and route so far. So in the third round of uh, Thriller against John Millman, which he won in over four hours. Now this one almost going four hours. Um, we know that he's very determined and very fit, but we will have to see how well he can actually recover and how well he's going to be able to play against Djokovic. So the other, other quarterfinals, moving on to Djokovic and Raonic. Um, that's pretty much in line with what I pre predicted in my previous video. I've taken uh, Djokovic to straight up, uh, to take out Ranić in, in four or maybe less sets, so that's what happened. Djokovic was neutralizing Ranić's serve well enough, making him play a lot, move him around a lot. <clears throat> and Ranić is not a bad athlete, but considering his height, his weight, <clears throat> Djokovic can take a lot of advantage and uh, he can move him around a lot and he can sort of take the confidence out of Milos Raonic and that's what happened. Um, it's not like Raonic wasn't fighting or he was giving up in the third set when conditions were even a lot slower and the court visibly slowed down as, a, as also said by the commentators. 
He may have been a little bit closer to Ajab that sat in a tie break, but he didn't. So Djokovic um, going through in a very convincing manner. All right, so the other quarterfinal, which uh, happened, uh, Stan Wawrinka against uh, Zverev. That's also a pick I, I, I had difficulties with. Um, I picked Zverev. In my predictions, I think I got lucky because it really could have gone either way. Um, apparently, Stan, I didn't see the whole match, but apparently he went off to a very good start, winning 6-1. And then at the beginning of the second set, Zverev sort of took over and won the next three sets pretty convincingly. So maybe for Stan, even though he, he, he sh he's shown in the first four rounds, especially in the second and fourth round, that he's a very tough player. Taking on Medvedev, um, a lot of matches he had to play and he had to put up with a lot of physical strain. Maybe that caught up with him just a little bit. Zverev is really riding on a hot streak right now, getting out a lot of confidence from his previous match against Rublev. So, good for him. Fantastic win for Zverev. He's sort of fulfilling a potential everybody was talking about already in 2017. So, good for him. First time he's qualifying into the semi-finals of a Grand Slam. Um, and he's going to play either team or Nadal. But I'm going to review that later when the team that on match is finished. So, going back to the Djokovic Federer match, which is going to happen on Thursday in the night session of the Australian Open. The Australian Open is the tournament when they don't have both semi men's semi final matches on a, on a Friday. They have the first one on Thursday and then the second on Friday, both are night sessions. So, Federer and Djokovic are up next. Uh, I've taken a look of their previous history. I've tried to break it down a little bit. So if you look at the screen, you see uh, Djokovic leads the series 26 to 23. I made a breakdown on surfaces. So outdoor hard, it's 13 all. So obviously this is the, the surface they've played the most. Indoor hard, Djokovic has a little edge, 6-5. Outdoor clay, they played eight times. It's four all once Djokovic has retired. And on outdoor grass, maybe a little bit surprising, but Djokovic has a significant advantage against arguably one of the greatest players on grass of all time, 3-1. Um, Federer won their first meeting on grass back in 2012 at the Wimbledon semi-final. Um, and then in the 2014, 15 and 2019 finals, Djokovic got the best of Federer. So this is their playing history. I've made it made a breakdown on years as well. So as you can see, Djokovic is the one I've uh, taken first since it's Djokovic against Federer. So 20, 2006, first time they played first year, 02, 2007. This was the first time when Djokovic managed to beat him. It was on half court in Canada in the Montreal final. So all the other three matches were won by Federer. So if you go through uh, and if you look at the years, you see um, it's relatively even. So it's not like one has an absolute great advantage above the other. Um, 2015 was next to 2011, was arguably the best match, uh, sorry, the best season Djokovic has ever had. So in those, he He's beaten Federer more than Federer has beaten him, obviously, but it's still not so very big, the gap. I mean, three matches, one during a year against Djokovic in 2015, the solidness he was playing against, the, the invincibility aura he had around him, that's still pretty good. So that shows a lot, that, that says a lot about Federer and his quality as a competitor as well. And in 2011, uh, the one uh, victory Federer has against Djokovic was the uh, French Open semi-final, which was probably one of the best, most spectacular encounters they've ever played against each, each other. Uh, something else I've taken a look at is 
in this head to head series, how many victories did the one have over the other? And the maximum number of victories, straight victories, is four. If you look at the Nadal Djokovic history, that's different. Djokovic has once a 7 to 0 series uh, win against Nadal and once I think 8 0. But here it's different. It's always been a, a swing between these two players. So this is not telling us much, in fact, but it's sort of an indicator and it really shows that either player can win. It really depends on the fact who is better on the day. So if Federer is capable to recover, which I hope he will be able to recover and he will give us a great match, then he has a shot, even though it looks unlikely, but I think he does have a shot. Having said that, Djokovic is obviously the favorite and out of the last five matches they've played, uh, Djokovic has won four. The last one they've played was the World Cup Finals round robin in London, which Federer won playing really great. So let's put it like that. If Federer managed to, manages to get back that form which he had in London, he has a chance to win. The question is, can he or will he be able to? The other thing is Djokovic has been really fantastic throughout the whole Australian swing during the ATP Cup, during the Australian Open so far. He's in fantastic form. Um, if he keeps that up, it's going to be incredibly difficult for Federer to, to break him down. But then again, as I said, if Federer can compete and go back to the form he's shown in London the last time they've played, I genuinely think he has a shot, even though this is a best of five. So let me know what you think. Please don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.